Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo, and in this video I'm talking about how I'm using On One Photo Raw along with Luminar AI to kind of get the best of both worlds and use them as a combined solution for my photos. Now, if you've been here before, you may have heard me say that I'm looking at alternatives for Lightroom. On One Photo Raw is one of those that I've been investigating, hence the number of videos that I've been doing as I continue to kind of dive into the different features. It's an absolutely great product. It's, it's a very worthy replacement for Lightroom. I haven't decided yet. I'm still working on that. But one of the key considerations for me is how do I get from my main photo hub, if you want to call it that. That's kind of what Lightroom is. It's where my catalog has been in the past, all that. How do I get from there to Luminar AI? Because Luminar AI is my favorite app. I use it all the time. There's so many great features, and I want to be able to take advantage of those. And so one of the things I've been working on is what's the best way for me to use Luminar AI in combination with On One. That's what we're doing. Here we go. Now, this is a photo I took a number of years ago. I've already cropped it. I did a little bit of transform. I did a few things like that. I took some spots out. And that's one of the things I like to do is kind of get my base canvas, if I for a better word, straight and set and ready to go in my core editor. So um, I'm doing that. I'm going to maybe add a little bit of contrast. And I'm just going to kind of play around here. I don't have a particular like firm plan with this particular photo. So I'm gonna you know, add some structure, do a few things like that. I've kind of got it looking the way I like. And what I wanna do now is go take advantage of some of the fun and exciting and powerful AI tools in Luminar AI to further enhance this photo. The thing is, you can't go from the edit module. You have to go from the browse module. So once you've done any edits that you've done here, assuming you're gonna do them, click on browse and go to the photo. And then here's my photo. This is the one I've been editing. And there's a send to option. So you just go up to file and you can see that I've already been experimenting with a lot of different apps, but you can click send to other application if nothing is showing here that you want and go add that application. But I've already added Luminar AI. I'm gonna click on that and you get some options here. You can edit a copy with settings applied or edit original. Edit original will send a copy of the raw file over. I'm not going to do that because I made all those other edits, so I'm going to edit a copy. By the way, normally this copy options is closed. You can open that. I'm going to choose a TIFF, Pro Photo, 16-bit, 300 uh, pixels, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to go ahead and say edit, and that will now launch it into Luminar AI, open it there, and allow me to take advantage of that app to further edit this photo. Okay, here's my photo. Note that it lands in the template section. I'm gonna go ahead and customize this. I'm not gonna use a template, but you could if you wanted to. I'm gonna click on edit and get over here and do some things that I wanna do. The first thing I wanna do is, and this is one of the great features of Luminar AI, is put a new sky in it. So this is Sky AI. I'm gonna go ahead and click there. I'm gonna click sky selection, and I'm gonna go down here and load a custom sky image. Then you navigate on your desktop. I'm in my textures folder. I've got a Matt Seuss's sky pack. It's a great sky pack if you want it. I've got a link down below. This Desert Sunsets collection is fantastic. And I'm going to use Sky 37 from the Desert Sunset collection. Go ahead and click open. Um, I realize there's no desert in uh, Copenhagen, which is where this was taken. But hey, we're having fun here. That's what this is all about. Um, I love that look. I'm going to drop the horizon position a little bit because I want a little bit more of some of that cooler color as well. And I just like how those clouds look. So I've positioned that the way I want it to be uh, positioned in the photo. I think that looks fantastic. So there's the before, there's the after. I'm gonna do a little bit of relight scene and that's something that I highly recommend experimenting with when you're adding a new sky, especially if you're changing completely the colors because this was obviously uh, just a gray overcast day. Let me show you that again. It looked like that, and this was basically around sunset time, but it was gray and overcast. There was no sunset, so when you add a sunset, keep in mind you want the colors of the foreground to kind of match the color of the sky. Also think about the direction of the light. Because the light was really flat in this base photo, because of the overcast sky, I don't have to worry about, oh, there's sunlight hitting the pavement from a certain direction, and therefore the sunset needs to match, but those are things you need to think about if you want it to look believable. I think that looks pretty fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and do a few other things. I love Accent AI, it's just a fantastic tool. I use that quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna come in here to landscape and give a little bit of golden hour. It's gonna warm up the entire photo, but I think that helps kind of sell that idea of the scene. And then one of my favorites, I'm gonna go over here and get mystical and just add a little bit of that kind of fun shadow kind of look to the photo. And you know what? I think that looks fantastic. I love the look of that, so now I'm done 
here in Luminar. And what I want to do is get this finished photo back into on one. And so this is where you need to be aware. It's not a full plugin. So Luminar AI, this instance of it is not running inside of on one. So there's not a like apply like there would be from Lightroom to Luminar where you click apply and it drops back into Lightroom. This is not automatic. So it's a, maybe a tiny bit more work, but it's not a big deal, but I'm going to click export and I'm going to click save to disk. And you're going to have some options here. You can always expand that. And I just want to make sure I'm in the right folder. I am. And by the way, I'm over here on an external drive. This is a LaCie external drive that I have sitting on my desktop that I have a lot of photos on. So this is the same folder, Copenhagen, March 2014. You can see I'm going to save this as a pro photo and I'm going to save that as a TIFF. And I'm going to save that in all the same format so that I have the best quality image possible no resizing, nothing else, but it's going back into the same folder. It's copy to, I'm going to go ahead and hit save and it will save that photo back in that same folder that I was using from on one to edit from. By the way, just as an aside, if you click on single image edit, you will see that photo is up here in the upper left. So it actually leaves that copy and it is a TIFF. If you look in this bottom right hand corner, you can see all the camera settings there but it is a TIFF file. It leaves that in single image edits. So if you ever wanted to go back and pick up that TIFF and do something else in Luminar, it is in your single image edit folder. Wanted you to be aware of that. I'm now going to close Luminar AI because I don't need it anymore and go back to on one. Back in on one, if you recall, I saved that in the same folder and you will see here is that photo edited. It is a TIFF. It's copy two, just as the name implied and it shows up directly right next to the original. And that's because in this bottom corner here, I am sorting by file name. If I were to sort by something else, like file type, it wouldn't show up next to the original because the original is a raw. That's a Nikon raw file, NEF, but this is a TIFF, but I saved it, or excuse me, I sort by file name and there it is. It shows up directly there. Now, if I want to further edit in on one, I can click on that and I'm back in the develop tab and I can go from there, add effects, do whatever I want to do. I actually think I will add a little bit more contrast to this photo just to give it a little bit more mood, kind of darken it. I kind of like that look. And the other thing I might do is pop over to the effects tab, add a filter. And in this case, just for fun, I'm going to grab a border. I'm going to go ahead and stick that on there, but I'm going to scale that down a little bit so it's not quite as big. Maybe something a little bit like that. I've basically completed my edit. So if I go back to browse, you will see I've got this final photo with the additional edits on, on one, including the border right next to the original, which by the way, does have some edits on it. Because if you recall, I cropped it. I took out some spots, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and I also did a little bit of transform and then a couple of minor things in the develop tab. But that's how I'm using the two together. It gives me the power and the flexibility of all the great tools in on one, plus the amazing AI capabilities in Luminar AI like sky replacement, plus all the fun color and light tools and filters that I love to use because I love the product so much. That's how I'm using the two together. They work together really well. Honestly, even though it's not a full plug in round trip and you've got to add it back into the folder that you started on or started from, it's just a quick save. You can rename it if you want to, whatever, but I don't rename simply because I want the original and the edited one to be sitting next to each other. And the only way that's going to happen is if they share a common naming. That's it, my friends. Hope that helps. Hope that gives you some ideas in case you're considering using Luminar AI along with On1. They work great together. They both have amazing capabilities. It's a super powerful combo. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Hope this helps, my friends. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll be back with more videos really soon. Have fun editing out there. Take care of yourselves and adios.